right, folks, we're headed to another real estate listing. I'm gonna give you a full tutorial on how I shoot it, what the room, what the situation looks like. Stay tuned, we're gonna get to this house in about 15 minutes and we're gonna check it out. We gotta do some drone photos. And the sky looks a little overcast. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to do this. All right, we just arrived at this house. Uh, in the back, it, there's a beautiful lake, Chautauqua Lake. We do have a storm coming in though, so I gotta hurry, and it is starting to sprinkle a little bit, but I'm gonna stay right here in the front of this house, get the shots of the lake. All right, so now we're in the inside of the house. This is the main living area. This is the living room. You can see the fireplace over to the left. We got the camera in the right side of the room. And if you come around here, you're gonna be able to see the ceiling. We got a somewhat cathedral pitch ceiling there, which is gonna be really easy to bounce and light this whole space with my 8200. So what I'm doing here is I am exposing for the room. I don't care about the windows being blown out. And here's what that image looks like. All right, so I'm just going to stand in the corner. This is for the flash pop. I'm just going to hold it up over my head and make one pop. And you're going to see the image here. And then I'm going to take you in now into Lightroom and edit these two images. So I brought the three images here into Lightroom. Here is the ambient image. This is the one that was straight out of camera. Uh, remember, our exposure was around zero or negative three, I believe. Uh, we were at ISO 200, 9mm at f4, 1 6 of a second. All this is basically irrelevant. Every situation is going to be different for you and what camera. What I have done is I have just created uh, different presets for different, and you can see that change right there. Uh, this is what I call the ambient single image. And I actually use this for the flash image too. I got to actually change this. So you can look here and see what I did. Um, I always keep the profile on standard by default it's um, Adobe color and it does change it a little bit it almost gets rid of some color casting Adobe color just has a funny different little tint to it so uh, leave it on a Adobe standard now as shot for your white balance I set my camera to auto white balance depending on what camera you have you're gonna um, it, you're just gonna have to play around with it whether or not as shot your auto white balance in your camera is gonna be accurate enough or the auto in Lightroom and to see how much warmer that made made it sometimes it's funny because sometimes Lightroom's auto is more accurate than your camera's white balance I'm gonna show you another trick to getting almost a perfect white balance once we bring these two images into Photoshop so I'm just gonna leave it on as shot I bump up the exposure a little bit on this drop the highlights almost all the way down because by default you know we want to make it easier to blend our flash image so that's why I bring the highlights down and then the shadows up a little bit I just like to brighten the whole entire image up clarity I don't mess with the vibrance or saturation. I believe for interior photography, you start to get too much. You start to pull out color casts where you don't want them. Coming down here even further, I actually am going to start reducing sharpness. I, I think by default, yeah, it's there. I would just leave it at the default. Uh, for real estate photography, you don't need things too sharp. And now, you're going to have to, depending on what camera and lens you're using. Uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have to pick the uh, profile corrections now I'm using the uh, Olympus EM1 Mark II with that Olympus 9 to 18 there is no light room preset for my setup so I just picked one that worked the best because if I could turn it turn it on and off see how it bows it in a little uh, the distortion and it corrects that and gets rid of that vignetting too so it took me a while to find one that works and I just make sure I save it. That's why creating presets is going to help you. And then I make sure that you click the vertical too. So if you turn that off and on, you can see how the verticals are just a little bit off. And that corrects it. And that's it. So all you got to do is once you make all your corrections, once you like that, you're going to do the same for every single image. So you might as well just come up here on the presets and hit the plus, create preset and name it whatever you want make sure all these are checked and then hit create and it'll be over here in your preset lineup okay moving on to the flash image 
here it is I'm gonna add my ambient single layer bump which actually just be name it something else and now I can see it break that up brighten that up even more bring those highlights down now not crazy you know not too hard window pulls but if you notice if I zoom in this window there something dirty or the Sun was coming in hitting it so it's not gonna look clean anyway in this particular situation so what I do is we're going to highlight both of those right click edit in open layers in Photoshop and once you have both both layers in Photoshop you're gonna want your ambient layer on top so if I turn the ambient layer off make sure you got the flash layer underneath what I like to do is just take the opacity here and bring it to 50 percent and I call it a day because remember you want to be uh, be able to be quick on site and you want to be quick in your editing also because the longer you take the less money you make the other way to do it would be to take uh, your layer mask here and then command I to invert that and to make sure this one is set to white over here with your paintbrush I make sure my flow is at between five and six percent and you can just start painting back in the ambient just like that we can bring the ambient back in I pretty much like to do ambient across the entire entire image and again you're gonna have to um, experiment with every single room usually but you're gonna be you're gonna get keen once you do this enough to know if ambient is gonna work for you or not as far as um, the natural light look because all I really do now is use the flash for the windows so they don't look so blown out but if we turn this on and off that's with just the flash and then adding that ambient layer back in it looks super nice and then right click flatten image now here's another trick what we can do now is to test for uh, white balance and this also also corrects for color cast what you can do is duplicate the layer and come up here to filter blur and then average so what you do now is you come down here and do a curves adjustment layer we're gonna click the middle eyedropper here double click on that and then click anywhere in anywhere in here okay so see what that did it changed it we're gonna come down here and now let's turn this tile list on and off so it did fix it there's a little like purple hue going around if you look how that kind of changed it look at the back of the couch too and again it if it pushes it too much in your for your taste you can come down here and just drop the opacity a little bit that's what I normally do I'd leave maybe 70 75 percent you can still t toggle that on and off and it gives you the correct white balance this is why shooting with lights off is important because you're not battling two different light sources of two different white balances you have daylight and then your flash which is also daylight so let's flatten this right click and flatten image and that's just telling you to discard the layer that's not on that's fine I'd like to go command s and save that and we'll bring it back in it's gonna bring it back into Lightroom as a tiff file down here you see that so now I have one final little bump I call it the interior final and it just kinda of boosts uh, some things and you know you can do whatever you want I add some more clarity to it I drop the highlights again and I can always come back in here and increase those blacks again but there you go that is the final image alright so we're uh, just wrapped up that photo shoot we did three or four exterior drone photos we walked the property got all the other exterior photos that we needed and then shot the interior uh, remember lights off if you can do it so it's 11 a.m. so we started at 10 a.m. that was exactly one hour leave a comment down below if you have any questions make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to continue to grow and learn how to grow your real estate business thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next video bye bye